Blessings, friends, and I want to thank you for joining us for this very special edition of Spotlight on Music. I am I am your host tonight, Bishop Andre Woods. We got a very special guest tonight. What I want you to do in preparation before we receive our guest, like and share Star Joan Watch Party. Let everybody know we're here live. We're on all of our pages, Bishop Andreas Woods. We're on Fellowship of Music and Arts, and we're going public as well. So listen, everybody can get in on this tonight. You'll be able to join us in the comment section if you desire. Uh, we want to welcome you for joining us tonight. And listen, whatever you do before I forget, uh, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel, 
Fellowship of Music and Arts. Uh, join the Fellowship of Music and Arts. No fee, no nothing. You want to be a part and get the notification bell uh, of all that we're going to be doing musically. Listen, just uh, uh, go ahead on and say you want to join. And certainly we'll be happy to have you as a part of our family. Well, tonight, listen, friend, we are in for a treat and a blessing. I want to uh, read a little information on our guest tonight in the person of Dr. Joseph W. Uh, sorry, Dr. Clark W. Joseph. I, always, I said, he got those wonderful uh, first names, and uh, but we thank God for our guest tonight. Clark W. Joseph, a native of Lafayette, Louisiana, is a workshop clinician specializing in ministering the good news of Jesus Christ through the medium of gospel, medium of music. He has earned his Bachelor of Music and Master of Music degrees in piano performance from the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. He also earned a Master of Science in Education from Fordham, Fordham uh, University in New York. He has done postgraduate work receiving certification in education administration from the City College of New York. He was awarded the Dean's Honor Scholarship from Southern Methodist University, uh, Perkins School of Theology, Dallas, Texas, where he earned a Master of Theological Studies. He was awarded a Doctor of Ministry from Bell Grove Theological Seminary, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Additionally, he has earned a Doctor of Worship Studies from Liberty University, Lynchburg, Virginia. The Ministry of Music has taken him throughout the United States, Africa, and Europe, conducting workshops and seminars. He has been a guest presenter at the Gospel Music Workshop of America and of the full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship Conference. He has been a guest lecturer at Southern Methodist University Perkins School of Theology in the Sacred Music Division since uh, 2006. His compositions have been recorded with the GMWA Mass Choir, GNWA Men of Promise, and Northern California chapter of GMWA, Martin Day Music Ministry Conference, and the Mount Sinai Baptist Church, Austin, Texas, and Regetta McNeil. He is a member of the following organizations, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, Dallas Metroplex Musicians Association, Gospel Music Workshop of America, and the National Association of Negro Musicians. Additionally, he is a member of the National Convention of Gospel Choirs and Courses and the Hampton University Ministers Conference. He has served as Minister of Music for the National Baptist Convention USA musical in 2006 in Dallas, Texas. Additionally, he served as Minister of Music for the National Baptist Convention of America board meeting musical in 2007 in Dallas, Texas. He was one of the featured ministers of music in the June 2007 issue of a national publication, Gospel Today magazine, and in January 2014 uh, in the By Design magazine. In June of 2008 and 2014, uh, he served as Minister of Music of the National Baptist Congress musical, Dallas, Texas. And additionally, he has served as conductor of the Black Academy of Arts and Letters, Black Music and Civil Rights Movement concert at the Mer Merison, uh, Myerson, I'm sorry, Symphony Hall in Dallas since 2008, featuring recording artists C.C. Winans, Lettucey, Chrisette Michelle, Ruben Studdard, uh, Dorinda Clark Cole, Karen Clark Shear, Fantasia, and Peebo Bryson. Other artists include Kim Burrell, Shante Moore, 
Phil Perry, Tony Terry, Rashawn Patterson, Beverly Crawford, Ernest Pugh, and B. Slade and Bilal. I hope I said that right. His church choir, the St. John Church Music Ministry, uh, was the 2011 Dallas regional winner of the How Sweet the Sound Choir Competition, representing the Dallas region in the national finale competition of Los Angeles, California. In 2012, for the same competition, the St. John Church Music Ministry uh, was the How Sweet the Sound Dallas Regional runner-up, and as well as the People's Choice Award winner. In 2013, the St. John Music Ministry was the national winner of the Hope Line Award from Verizon, How Sweet the Sound. As a result of this award, Verizon presented uh, $10,000 to the Brighter Tomorrows, an organization that combat, combats domestic violence. In 2014, the St. John Music Ministry was the featured choir on Flow Records, live recording of Bishop Richard Mr. Clean White, I'm glad. And in 2015, the St. John's Music Ministry recorded with Ian Craig and uh, I go. I better say this right. I'm gonna take a stand of Gideon's. All right, Gideon's 300 change. In 2016, he was inducted into the Dallas Metroplex Musicians Association Hall of Fame and awarded uh, Choir Director of the Year by the Music and by the Music and Ministry Awards of KHVN. Additionally, served as Choir Director of the Dallas State Fair, A Night of Gospel. In 2019, he had the privilege of conducting the Dallas Unity Choir for the Gospel Goals Classical Concert featuring the Dallas Symphony Orchestra and Bishop Marvin Winans. In 2021, his choir, the St. James Church Choir Music Ministry uh, was invited to perform for the American Choral Directors Association National Conference. And in 2022, he serves as the choir master for Together We Sing, with the Dallas Symphony Orchestra uh, presenting a tribute to the one and only Richard Smallwood. Clark presently serves as full-time minister of music and worship arts at the St. John's Church Unleashed of Grand Prairie, South Lake, Texas. One church ministering in multiple locations. Prior to locating to Grand Prairie, Grand Prairie, Texas. He worked for the New York City Board of Education as a school administrator. He is the father of three sons, Wynton Lamar, a graduate of Texas AME, AME, uh, a and sorry, University. Carmel Micah, a graduate of Stephen F. Austin University and Ross Wayman, a student at Texas Tech University. Oh, Dr. Joseph, I, I, I made it through, man. I tell you, what, what a bio. My friend, you have been on the go. You've been busy. Listen, friends, without further ado, let's welcome the one and only Dr. Clark W. Joseph. Welcome, friend, to this wonderful platform, and thank you for being here. My absolute pleasure, and uh, I'm going to give you a hand for reading all of that. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, I, when I read it, I said, oh, I got, I, I got to read all of it. Let me find my glasses, because this here is impressive, and, and, and I like to do that because uh, prayerfully those who are listening will hear, because they see you, but they have really no idea who you are. And, 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 
how you've come and what where you've been and what you've been through to get to just this day sure. and 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 all that God has blessed you to do listen man I'm I'm, I'm gonna give you the mic because what I want you to do for us is to take us back when you first got interested in music and when you kind of really knew that music was going to be your life's pursuit. How did all this get started? Wow. Well, you know, this, this interview has caused, is causing me to reflect and to uh, really uh, go back and, uh, and in my reflection, just thanking God uh, for my journey. Um, I, I started um, as a little boy being taken to church by my grandparents, my grandfather in particular, um, who was a deacon. Um, and so he was in church all the time. Um, there's that famous saying, I was drugged to church. That was me um, with my grandfather. And so I was always amazed um, at the musicians and the choir and how that all came together. Um, I grew up, the church I grew up in, the organ was on one side and the piano was on the other side and the choir was in the center. Um, and, and for me, magic happened every Sunday. And so I knew um, that that was something that I wanted to uh, be a part of and experience. Um, and so church was not an issue for me. I, I wanted to be there to see what the choir was going to sing and what, what the musicians were going to play. Um, and then I had an aunt um, who lived about an hour away. She had a piano um, in her home and uh, she would allow me to bang on it because that's all I was doing um, at that time. I guess I was around six or seven years old and she would allow me to bang on her piano. And eventually I started uh, making a few melodies, a few sounds um, and it started to sound good. So um, it kind of progressed from there. Um, in the sixth grade, in the sixth grade, uh, my language arts teacher had us to write um, an essay about what we like and what we wanted to do when we uh, um, got grown. And so, of course, I wrote about music and, and talked about the joy that music brought and um, how I felt when I was doing music. And so she called my parents in for um, a conference and shared with my parents that it was imperative that they got me an instrument and that they got me private lessons. That was in October. In December, I got a piano for Christmas and began to um, take private lessons. And so it kind of started from there. Um, and then I'll just mention briefly, I had awesome music teachers in the public schools that I, that I attended. Those music teachers taught, I mean, they taught theory. They taught it all. And so I had a great foundation um, musically. Um, I'll just mention a few of those teachers' names. Uh, Miss Lynetta Mouton, who I am still in contact with, who lives in Atlanta, Georgia, um, laid a great foundation. Mathilda Martin, Earlene Pipkin, David Pipkin, uh, Louise Kinney, uh, Mary Jane Jones. All of those were my music teachers in public school and just gave me an absolute um, solid foundation. And, and I am where I am today because of what they provided me. So that's kind of uh, my beginning um, as far as church and, and school. Um, and then that led me on to, to college. So I'll stop there. Yeah. And what, 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 that's good. That's good. You know, and I, and I thank you for doing that because a lot of people forget where they come from and the people that were perhaps the bridge and and the fact that you 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 mentioned your your school teachers and and how you got started when they recognized your talent and your gift and and called your parents what what a blessing yes. you know a lot of, a lot of young people don't have that testimony uh, that they can look back in their past and see how those who encouraged them and made sure they took the next step toward a life lifetime or dream or goal that is that is so impressive well well listen man now you 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 are originally from new york is that right i'm originally from lafayette louisiana okay and you were in your new york school or something right 
um, upon finishing um, high school and undergrad, and I did my first master's in Lafayette, I then moved to New York, okay. um, started to do some other things there, um, really moved into education heavily, uh, but always served in music ministry and uh, did some work off Broadway as well. Um, so yeah, but I'm a native Louisiania and proud. Right. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brandon Walker's out there saying hello and uh, Dr. Gregory Troy from Detroit. Yeah, they, they chime, people are trying, chiming in. Thank you, Teresa Acton for always being there. Uh, so you, 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 you mentioned, started the ed education in New York. And how did you end up at St. John's? How'd you end up uh, in Dallas? Wow, that, that was truly a God moment. Talking about a blessing chasing you. Um, I came to Dallas uh, for a wedding. One of my former choir members from Louisiana got married in Dallas and she was marrying um, a preacher uh, from this church. And so I attended the wedding and um, met him. And he said, oh, so nice to meet you. Uh, my church is um, looking for a full-time minister of music. And so he said, we want you to send your resume. And I heard what he said. At the time, I was assistant principal um, of an elementary school. And so I was like, oh, I'm not leaving my job. Uh, to come and serve and work for a church. And so I didn't respond and they called and called and called. And so finally I sent my resume in. And next thing I knew I was invited um, to come and do a workshop slash interview. Well, when I got to Dallas, it's like the Lord arrested me and said, this is the place um, that I want you to be. Now, let me, let me backtrack. At my school, one of the teachers, um, I had lunch with one of the teachers, and she shared with me, she actually prophesied. She said, there is going to be a church that will be calling you. And she said, when they call you, you go. That was maybe two years prior to this wedding. And wow. so it all came to fruition when I uh, got to Dallas, did the workshop, and the Lord blessed and the next thing I, I knew, um, I, I was given an offer. Um, and, and then it's like June, school starts in August, September rather. August, I was in Dallas. I had moved to Dallas, but check this out. I didn't resign from my job as assistant principal. I took a leave of absence just in case. <laughs> I, I knew I had heard from God, but just in case, I wanted to make sure. And I tell you, I have not looked back. It's been 20, uh, I'm getting ready to start my 26th year. Wow. Not looked back. It's been an awesome uh, marriage between myself, my pastor, Pastor Denny Davis, um, the church and the music ministry. And so um, the word that was given to me by that teacher who is now deceased, I wish I was able to share with her how God used her to get this ball rolling and get me to Dallas. Um, it, it has just been mind blowing. Uh, I'm a living witness. When you go with where God wants you to go, he will do the rest. He will bless you beyond measure. And so oh, man. that's how I got to Dallas. Yeah. Uh, I've been to New York. I've been back to New York to visit friends um, on several occasions, but I get right back on that plane and head. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, Brother Brandon want to know what, what was your favorite song you loved to hear uh, in childhood choir when you were in the uh, kids choir when you were younger? There was a song, and uh, it's it's probably unknown, but it was taught by the minister of music um, at the church, and it was called, the title of the song was How Can You Tell? Um, and it was a little kiddie song, but the words went, uh, how can you tell I'm a child of God? And oh. we just kept repeating that. And I remembered it was in the key of C uh, because of the, the, the theory that I had 
in, in my elementary schools, I was able to look at that music and determine that it was in, I wasn't able to play it, but I was able to determine that it was in the key of C. I knew enough theory um, to, to understand that. So that was my favorite song as a child. How can you tell I'm a child of God? Oh, that, that, that's, that's awesome. How can you tell I'm a child of God? And you remember <laughs> to this day, all these years later. And that's the power. I want to add this. That's the power of music. Music can take you back to a place um, years ago, take uh -huh. you to it, right back to that experience. That's the, the, the beauty and the power of it. That's why, uh, and I, I may be moving ahead, but that's why we have to be so careful of what we take in musically because it takes it begins to take residence in us um and and it could propel us into where we're going to be and hopefully that's some something positive and something good and so what we take in um has to be good stuff it has to be good food um so that when it comes up again it's good mm -hmm. yeah now now when you arrived in dallas to take the position uh what 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 did you find there? What, did you find a well-rounded choir or what was the church lacking in any way when it came to the music? Uh, yes, it was a well-rounded uh, music ministry, good singers, good choirs. Um, one of the weak areas uh, was the men's choir. And so I knew that that was an area I needed to strengthen. And so I started there. The other choirs were already singing and I just kind of continued, but I began to build up the men. Um, and I, I'll share this funny story. Um, I was in the foyer of the church, um, just kind of watching people as they were coming in. And the men were, have, were singing that Sunday. Um, and I saw this couple and they walked in and they saw the men and they said, Oh no, not not today. I, I can't do that. <laughs> and so that was my key. That's where you start. That's where that's the area that you strengthen. And so to God be the glory with God's help, we have been able over these years, we've been able to um, strengthen the men and the men now have a following at the church. All right, all right. Hear the men. Um, yeah. So um, and I, uh, again, this is a whole nother subject, but I believe the men ought to take their rightful respective places and be the worship leaders in the house of God. Um, and so, yeah, it was a well-rounded um, uh, music ministry. One of the things the pastor shared with me, he said, I want us to um, uh, be cutting edge. I want us to um, meet the needs of our entire congregation. And that, that blessed me because that's exactly what I'm about, meeting the needs of the people. Yeah. Not just focusing in on what I like, but focusing in on what are the needs of the people. How can I assist the pastor? How can I help him grow the people through the medium of music? Yeah. Man, you, 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 you answered my question before I asked. <laughs> because one, one of the things that I found in doing workshops in a lot of places. I know I'm in Detroit and I've had pastors to call me and others uh, to help them deal with their musicians or because some pastors are not music savvy. They, they, you know, they know what they know. They know what they'd like to see and they have the vision. It's just a matter of bringing the right personnel in and, and uh, speak to us concerning uh, the relationship between a minister of music and the pastor and, and what that should look like. Cause I a lot of these young musicians don't know. Right. Yeah, it's the, the, that's a, a loaded question, but certainly it's one that we, we have to um, talk about and investigate. Um, as a musician, you have to know that the pastor is the chief worshiper in that house. And so the chief worshiper gives the instruction through Bible study, through the preached word, through communication and conversation. You learn um, what the pastor is looking for and you learn what his vision is. How do you take the pastor's vision 
and work it within the vision that God has given you as the minister. Your vision does not supersede the pastor's vision. It falls underneath, it falls in cooperation with. Um, and so somebody asked, how have you managed to stay at the same church for 26 years? And this is what I always say, I've been able to stay there for 26 years because I know that I'm not the pastor. <laughs> I'm the minister of music and so I fall underneath the pastor. My job is to be a part of his hands and his feet, his arms and his legs to get the work of the ministry done, to shepherd the people um, that God has entrusted me with, to pastor them underneath the senior pastor of the church. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's important that you, you know the pastor's part. It's important that you speak like him. It's, it's important that, that um, you develop a relationship with him. You develop trust with him. You develop yeah. him, he develops trust with you. And there's a mutual respect um, between the two. You're not in competition, but you are in cooperation. Um, I, I, I know my pastor, I could look at him and could kind of tell what's going on. I could tell if he's going to move here, if he's going to move. I've studied him. I've spent time with him. Um, and, and likewise, I, I would want to say he knows me as well. Um, and so, and then the people, the music ministry, the congregation, they're very keen. They're very astute. They're, they're able to pick up that there is a marriage there and what God has joined together, mm -hmm. no, let nothing separate. And so the congregation is able to pick that up and they understand, wow, it's a team effort. Yeah. And that's what you wanna get across. Um, when, when a team effort is portrayed, it doesn't mean that you agree with everything. God has not called us to agree on everything, but he has called for us to follow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so um, I think from a musician perspective, from a minister of music perspective, honoring the man or woman of God, uh, recognizing them that they are the chief worshipers of that house. They provide the overall vision for the house. Now, as minister of music, it is your job and your responsibility to fit the vision that God has given you musically within the vision that God has given the pastor. Oh man, that's priceless. That's, that's, that's workshop counsel right there for young musicians to get that. Because uh, in my experience, I've, I've, heard, I've heard of all the horror stories on both sides, you know, and uh, it's, it's a blessing to hear your testimony that it's, it's like a marriage and, and you all have agreement, you work together and and like let no man put a sun down. I don't care what they talk about. And that is so much needed uh, in our instruction to young musicians and even uh, to new young pastors who are coming into churches. Uh, I had this experience. I don't know if you ever had this experience during your workshop uh, when you travel, but I ended up at a church one time. I ain't gonna say the church cause somebody listening might know who it is, but that, that was this tug of war. Uh, the pastor wanted a good choir and when he got it, it was like, okay, I want y'all to sing good, but not too good cause the people, the people getting with y'all, you know, and, uh, uh, they, they rejoicing in there, they're shouting in there. I mean, you know, and uh, I can't get some of these folk to move on my preaching, you know, Y'all got to go. And I'm like, I had to tell the pastor, I said, man, that's what you want. I mean, you make your job easy. And maybe the Holy Spirit is trying to save you. And you just got to go with the flow. And, 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 and the choir could sing a song. So I, I referenced them to the book of Chronicles when they sung and they were on one accord. And uh, the Lord came in, the cloud filled, the glory cloud of God filled the place. That that even the, the the priest could not even minister, and sometime uh, when we understand the importance of music, praising the Lord through music, I think they get it. But 
Uh, I think he understood because they're doing better now, thank God. I told the pastor, I said, man, you know, you got what a lot of pastors dream they had, a good choir. So let them sing. That, that's, that's what they're up here for. Let them help you. And, you know, and go with it, man, you know, before you lose them. So uh, have, have you ever experienced that with working in workshops with people? Yes, yes. Uh, that, <laughs> yeah, I've experienced that. Um, I've had the same situation, um, you know, hearing from ministers of music and from pastors. Um, and that's when um, somebody has lost what that word ministry, minister really means. Minister means to meet the needs. And so it matters not how the needs are met. It could, yeah. it could come through devotion. It could come through the prayer. It could come through praise and worship. It, it can come through the ministry of music via the choir. It could come, God can move um, at any point in the service. The, the main thing, you want people to be challenged. You want people to be blessed and encouraged. Um, and so if it comes through an area that is not yours, that's okay. That's okay. It's, it's what matters is that the people's needs are being met and that they are ministered to. Um, and it, it, I guess it gets to the point um, when you know your role, and you know that um, from a musician perspective, I'll speak from that, um, you are a slither in the pie. You're not the whole pie. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that um, you, you serve that slither and not serve the whole pie because there's something coming after you. Yeah. Um, and so somebody might be saying, well, I'm not sure about the slither. Well, you're not the turkey. <laughs> You're the greens and you're the yams and, and the mac and cheese. Uh, so you're, you're, you're a part of the meal, but you are not the meal. And so mm. make sure that we understand that. Now, once you present, uh, you, you, I, I have this thing called um, prepare, practice what you prepare, and that gives you license to present it. So you oh, say that again. <laughs> That means you've planned, you've, you've set, you've spent time with God um, and, and you're working out what he's giving you. You're gonna practice what he's given you. And only if you've done those two, will you have license now to present. Prepare, practice what you've prepared. Now you're ready to present it. In that presentation, in that presentation, you wanna make sure that you do that presentation with the mindset, um, there, there's a whole meal, there's a full course meal coming through. And so I've got to make sure that I don't spend um, X amount of time that takes up the time from the other parts of the meal. Um, thing from a pastoral standpoint, pastor has to realize God may move, um, in the serving of the salad. Mm -hmm. And the people can be fed and their needs can be met in the serving of the salad. And that's when you, you, you pray and you thank God for his, his Holy Spirit moving. Um, you lift that offering and you give that benediction and you call it a day. Because wow. the needs have been met. Um, so yeah, just knowing your role and being sensitive to the move of God. Uh, within a given service. Um, it, it may call, uh, the, the church I served in in New York, I will never forget it. I walked in one Sunday and um, went to the instrument and the pastor said, today um, we're gonna be uh, foot washing. I said, what, what, foot washing? <laughs> and, and so we had to make that adjustment. That's where the, the Holy Spirit was leading him. And so we have to be um, fluid enough that we're able to move with the flow of the house at a given moment. And that's from the pastor on down, uh, being able to move so that God can do the work that, that needs to be done. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. I, I'm gonna remember that. I'm gonna send you some tides when I, when I <laughs> to, to prepare, to practice, and then you have license to present. That 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 is awesome. That's wisdom. 
Uh, thank you for that. Um, let me ask you this. St. John, uh, looking at your bio, man, you all have accomplished so much uh, uh, through the music ministry and uh, it's, it's a standout ministry. Do you find your church being like, you know, around the country, there are those uh, exemplary churches that are known for their preaching, known for their, their music, uh, their contribution to sacred music, gospel music. Uh, how, how, how has it been for St. John uh, looking at all that you all have been involved in and done over the years? Yes. Um, yeah, uh, we have, the church has, has become known for the music ministry, but also for the preaching of our pastor. So um, it's been a great team effort. Um, if my pastor is on to preach um, and, the, and the people know that the choir is going to be there. Um, and so uh, the two have worked well together. Um, in certain entities, we would be known as uh, the, the church with a, a great choir um, in other areas will be known as the church with a great pastor. And then in other entities will be known as, as a, a awesome church, awesome worship ministry, awesome music ministry. Um, and so I, I, I just thank God. Um, I tell the music ministry all the time, let's do the work. Um, let's praise God for every ministry opportunity, um, that comes our way because there are others that are doing it just as well. But when God blesses you with a ministry opportunity, you don't take it lightly and you approach it like it's gonna be your last one. Oh, um, wow, wow. That has been um, my, my mantra. The other thing um, I always challenge the music ministry, we are the ministry of music on the move. And I like that, on the move, to the next level of perfection. And so we never reach perfection. We are constantly working towards it. Um, my church, and I, I'm kind of known in the city um, as the rehearsal king. I, I just believe in preparation. Um, I, I, I believe that uh, we serve an excellent God who deserves, deserves excellence. And the only way you can get excellence is through your preparation. So there has to be a coming together. There has to be time spent um, courting. There has to be a time spent where there's engagement. There has to be a time spent where there's a marriage. And only then can there be a honeymoon. Mm -hmm. If you haven't courted, you haven't spent time, you haven't gotten married, you haven't had the wedding, the wedding and the reception, you shouldn't be trying to go to the honeymoon. I know this is 2022. <laughs> we're doing all the other things. But I just believe the honeymoon can be richer. Yeah. Those other pieces have been in place. So that's, that's kind of how I approach it. Um, yeah, we've done a lot. Um, and I, would, I kind of document. And that's why you see all of this in the bio. Mm -hmm. um, I do the work. And we're moving on to the next thing because you cannot rest on what you've done. You've got to keep moving. You've got to keep, our God is a progressive God. And so he's, he's allowed us to serve in ministry. Not that we rest on what we've done, but that we are moving to the next level of perfection. Man, this is awesome. Listen, I was following you. But let me mention this because I, I, when you talk about being the rehearsal king, I, I, you, I'm telling you, you answered all my questions before I get there. That's that spiritual antenna you got up, man. Listen, I, uh, uh, Lee Williams came to Detroit and uh, we had a chance to sit around the table while he was waiting to sing. And I, I, we asked him, man, how do you, y'all, what is your rehearsals like in, in, in your song? How long is your rehearsal? He looked at us, he said, we rehearse uh, so till we can't get it wrong. Mm. That's how long we rehearse. We rehearse till we get it right. And it. We don't leave rehearsal and leave it to chance. Talking about we'll get it next week. No, we rehearse till we can't get it wrong. I said, wow, I never heard that like that. Yes. You know, just watch this guy stand on a dime and just never move and just sing and got all these words and 
I mean, I call him the ad lib king because he can go for 20 minutes. Right. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. You know, listen, I was following you months back. This was last year, I believe. And one of your songs was in a series on network television. And uh, what was that story? 50 something. Filthy Rich. Filthy Rich. And uh, oh man, I, I got excited. I was calling everybody. I said, I know him. I know him. You don't know him. I said, yes, I do. That's Dr. <laughs> Matt, tell me about that experience. Wow. You know, I, I am still blown away of how God can bless you. Um, I, I was sitting in my office pre-pandemic um, working on some stuff for church and I get this call and uh, this guy says, uh, may I speak with Clark Joseph? And I said, this is he. And he went on to share with me. He said, we have your song. We've come to praise the Lord. Um, and we have this upcoming show, Filthy Rich, that's going to be airing next year. Um, and we would like to use that song as a part of one of our episodes. I said, wow. I asked the man, I said, where did you find, how did you hear about the song? Where, he couldn't tell me. He was the music uh, licensing person. Yeah. He couldn't tell me where he got the song. And so I'm, I'm saying this, God has a way of having a blessing chase you. Oh man. I don't know where they got the song. I, I recorded the song with, with my church. I recorded the song twice with GMWA. First time with the men in 2000. Um, and then again with the mass choir uh, in 2002. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know. I, I don't know how, uh, <laughs> but the blessing is, yeah, they got the song. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it was a part of uh, the, I think yeah. in the last episode for that season. And, um, and hallelujah, um, the Lord blessed in a great financial way. I understand. I understand <laughs> what you're saying, Doc. Because uh, when I heard about it, because I, st I started watching that series, I mean, they had me hooked. I said, oh, let me see how this going to turn out, right. you know? It, it, it was very interesting, the storyline and yeah. all the family thing, the church stuff, you right. know, and uh, then they made that announcement and uh, I said, oh, yeah, and man, I'm telling you, it was, it was off the chain, as the kids say. That, that's such a blessing, man. That is such a blessing. And congratulations again uh, on those opportunities. And uh, how look how God is moving and and with uh, jingles, commercials, and, yes. and and spots in movies and series. And uh, it's such a blessing. Gospel music is really getting its props, I would say it like that. Yes. Uh, and and such a, an art form until I think the world kind of know, but they don't want to really let go and, and, and give it what it's really just due. Because uh, I was getting a little discouraged a few years ago when I saw how these great big networks was buying up all of the radio stations and mm -hmm. minimizing airplay for gospel. Right. And most of our gospel DJs were pushed out or they had to buy their time to be on and, and uh, make the shift to, to cable and internet radio, uh, all of the stuff that the... Uh, big old network stations were like Clear Channel and some of these other folk, they were just buying up all the stations. It happened here in Detroit. Mm -hmm. You know, we had we had several good FM stations that they would play gospel music. Uh, they had gospel music programming, but it just, they wiped it out. Yeah. You know, yeah. and um, it, it, it kind of uh, put a void uh, for our weekends, you know, we don't have uh, on radio, you know, the back-to-back -back church broadcast like we used to have and uh, a, a regular DJ just spinning our music, right? you know, back-to-back. -back. 
So uh, I thank God for this internet and uh, Spotify, iTunes, and all the other tunes uh, that, that they bring it out uh, to kind of help gospel music, you know, stay vibrant and, and where people can get it. All of the mom and pop stores are gone. Yes. You know, all of the, the Bible bookstores, you used to can go in right. and buy, you know, uh, good church music and song books and all that. All that stuff is gone. And yeah. so uh, I just believe that God is blessing us now to create venues like, like your church, you know, the church uh, uh, Bible bookstore, your, your music, they have to come to you, put it on a website. They can, you know, pay a fee and download it. God got a way of turning things in our favor. Right. That's Get right. rid of the middleman now. Right. You know, right. do your own publishing. Yes. Get the whole hundred percent instead of splitting stuff. Splitting it. There you I'm go. enjoying the trip, man. I'm telling you, <laughs> right. it is a blessing. Well, I wanted to make mention of that, yeah, man, because I mean, uh, uh, that also what what happened with you uh, opened doors for others to come behind, you know, and other episodes of that they're going to be doing when it comes to highlighting, you know, church and gospel music. What a blessing. Yeah, Bishop Woods, can, can I just uh, say this? I, I think um, opportunities like that speak to the power and the greatness of gospel music. Um, we, as a people, we sort of take it for granted. I mean, we hear it in our churches, um, you know, we hear, hear it on projects, and it's, it's a part of us. Uh, but, and I'm sure you've experienced this, when you go overseas, I mean, they absolutely love gospel music. What we take for granted, I mean, um, it, it's just like you're a rock star overseas. Um, and so when God begins to open those doors um, where you, you hear it um, on, on these episodes on TV shows, um, you hear it, um, and when you go into the mall, you hear some stores playing it. Um, that's a, a, a major blessing to hear the music um, that we can call our own to hear it in those entities um, and to have it received. That's a blessing. And so it challenges us, those of us who are in music ministry, who, who are lovers of gospel music and uh, oversee, overseers of it, um, to approach it from that standpoint, this is, it's just not a, any old kind of music. It's music with power. It's music that's making impact. Um, and so that, that should challenge us, uh, whatever we do to present it um, with a spirit of excellence. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's awesome. Let, let me turn the corner now and uh, I wanna try to get all as much as we can in. What is your, take on, you know, we were shut down this pandemic and all this. We had to downsize and uh, a lot of people went to smaller groups of praise teams when they were coming back to do like their lives at the church. Um, what do you feel about the, uh, the climate of the church when it comes to, I don't like to use the word verses, but in some cases, you know, for a lack of better word, the praise team versus the choir, or is there a way they can coexist in harmony? Yes, um, by, by all means, um, they certainly can coexist. Um, I think when you go back to uh, biblical worship, when you start talking about worship from a biblical perspective, um, there was choir and praise team. There wasn't one or the other. And each of them had specific um, goals in mind. They, they had specific duties and responsibilities. Um, and so uh, we have to make sure um, that we keep, and I'll use this word foundation. Uh, I'm reminded of, uh, let me go to this hymn right quick. Um, the hymn, A Charge to Keep I Have, mm. A God to Glorify. That second stanza says, to serve this present age, mm -hmm. my calling to fulfill. 
So to serve this present age, millennials, Gen Xs, Gen Ys, Gen Zs, that's our present age, my calling to fulfill. It didn't say that we throw away our foundation. It said that we keep our foundation, we add to it. And so our foundation is choir, we add praise team on top and the two can coexist together because they have different functions, they have different roles. Um, and so, yeah, we've got to make sure that um, we, we, we keep our foundation and build on it, not throw it away. And so I, I often tell churches uh, that I've been blessed to go into, if you are um, spending uh, X amount of time on the latest gospel song uh, with the praise team or the latest praise and worship tune, um, and you have not touched the choir material, you have not touched the hymns, you have not touched the anthems, you are standing on shaky foundation. Wow. It's important that we keep our foundation, but we continually add to it. We continually add to it. I remember the first time, and you may remember this, I was at GMWA. I think it may have been in Los Angeles. Uh, or it might have been Detroit. I can't remember. The first time I heard gospel rap, I was like, what in the world is this? It was the word, it was just using a different medium to present it. Mm -hmm. And now we have that, we have gospel rap now. It's a, it's a category. We have gospel rappers yeah. in the churches, all right? Does that mean that we only have gospel rap? No, it means that we have everything else and we add that to it. So um, uh, our God is a progressive God. We're continually adding. So when you say choir and praise team, yes, they should most definitely coexist together. I share with pastors all the time, uh, before COVID, pastors would go out for three o'clock services. I don't know if they still do that in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And I would say to the pastor, uh, do you want to go out with a praise team or do you want to go out with a choir? And they say, oh, I want to go out with a choir. Well, you've got to what? You've got to uh, 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 encourage that in your, in your regular worship. Sometimes the choir is the only group that will go to represent the church. A lot right. of the, the congregation is not there. But if you got a good choir, if you got 50, 60 people, that's good representation yeah. for the church. That looks better than nine or 10 as a praise team. Now, there are times that a praise team is more effective. So that's why I said, you've got to have both. Um, choir allows for more participation. Praise team, it's a small group. And so you close uh, that, that, that area of participation or that opportunity for participation by only having a praise team. You need both. And then I will add this, it's important that the praise team is a part of the choir. Oh, Lord. Yes. <laughs> because you are not a special reserved group. Well, or well, a group well, well. That, that has a specific role, but you are a part of the music ministry. You are a part of the choir. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I did a workshop right just before, I think it was February 2020, just before the pandemic hit. And that was one of the situations I was presented with. The pastor was saying, man, I'm having problems with this, that, and that. I said, well, we can stop that. You know, exactly what you said. I said, they need to be a part of the choir. That's right. You allowed them to be their total separate entity and they got special seats and they come up, you know, behind you after the choir done sat down. I'm like, no, you, you allowing visual division, you That's know? Right. That's right. And then they had, they, they had this guy who was the praise leader. And I said, pastor, you're the praise leader. That's right. Not him. You know, he sang lead everything and, you know, glorified cheerleader, touch your neighbor, run around the building, hug your neighbor, mm -hmm. give high five. I mean, 
if you go on and sing, maybe they'll get with you all in a row. Right, that's Stop right. all these directions. You know, let right. me ask you this. Uh, 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 I don't see it a whole lot with some, some churches, and then I've seen it in church. What do you think about choreographed music on Sunday where they, you know, they the choir is very active. That uh, sometimes <laughs> my mother told me we went to a church one time. She said, "Well, who's directing the choir members or the director? Because they moving their hands and they doing all. I mean, they were really active." I say, "Well, you know, this is something new. You know that, um, you know, they just, you know, speaking the sentiments of the song, and they just all into it." She said, "But then." Well, there he is. He all he doing all kind of stuff. I said, "Don't ask me. I don't know." Well, how do you look at that? What what is that? Right, choreography. I I like to look think of choreography as icing on the cake. Okay. And so, what I mean by that, um, if you have a three layer cake, um, and you have the right ingredients in the cake. Let me start off with that. You have the right ingredients to that cake. The icing will only enhance and bring out what's already there. You don't want the icing to take over the cake. Come on, come on, talk to me, cake bakers. You don't <laughs> want the icing to drown the cake and cause the cake to fall. You want it to enhance the cake. And so, I think choreography, just a little of it to enhance uh, your presentation, to enhance your ministry. Somebody uh, in your congregation may be a visual learner. And so they can receive from the visual part of your presentation, but you don't wanna have so much of the visual part that they can't hear what you're singing. You can't, they can't hear the message. Um, and so I always like to think of it as something that enhances the cake, uh, enhances the presentation. Mm -hmm. Just a little here and there. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, I, I, had, I have a good friend and I, she's probably on, uh, she says, I don't wanna go to church and do all these routines. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, so just a little something, something, because we are a visual people. We're dealing with internet, we're dealing with TV, YouTube, and all of that. And so our people are seeing movement. They're seeing lights and cameras and action. And yeah. so gone are the days where we just stand with our hands by our sides and see. <laughs> but you have to engage them with your hands and with your eyes and with your bodies. Uh, but now if you're doing too much of that, they'll miss yeah, it'd be like distraction. So I think it, it needs to be like icing on a cake, um, just enough to enhance it. And I heard I heard a cake baker say this: if you have the right ingredients in the cake, you don't need icing. Yes, yeah, Stacy Adams Hartfield said, There it is, bake the cake. Bake the cake. <laughs> She's one of my choir members, so she okay. knows I, I, I preach this all the time. Oh. <laughs> She said, bake that cake. Well, well, I, I remember when I was a church organist at, at St. James, JD stressed those things. The late Jimmy Dow, Charles yeah. Nixon, they, they would tell us, listen, clap, we're gonna, we're gonna be uniformed in whatever right. we do. That's right. You know, so uh if we gonna if we gonna sway, we all gonna sway. There you go. If yes, we're gonna sir. clap, then we all gonna clap. That's right. We, we, we're going to do it so it won't be a distracting to you singing the message as well as those whom you're ministering to. So they'll get the message. Stop listening and start looking at right. what they're doing now. Right. You know? That's right. And, 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 and that's always been, you know, my thing with some, some choirs. I think, you know, and even down to now, um, the, the uniformity or the like thereof with mm -hmm. some situations and, and, and groups where, in my estimation, I think the come as you are thing had nothing to do with dress. It was like the condition of your life, your heart, you know, yes. if you were a liar or you were a thief or whatever your right. sin state was. But then they started attacking it with the dress and uh, where did, I'm like, no, some of y'all need to, where was fitting 
for you. You know, don't try to follow these trends of fashion. That ain't for everybody. Right. There you know, you in my estimation. That's why I always I always like robes or or even if they don't wear robes, they would the ladies would find something suitable and alike and the guys would do the same. But of course we we you know here we are in this in this modern era, you know, and especially some of the community choirs. Oh man. I saw one choir where everybody was they all they had was dyed the same color. Uh oh. I'm like, what's that all about? Is this, is this the Halloween choir? Okay. What? I mean, man, they go for it, you know. And I and I had to tell a couple of young ladies. I said, you know, you're too beautiful. Uh, now you got all these tattoos. Now you now you done gone to piercing. I mean, and the, the the we don't know what color hair you gonna come in with monthly. And today you got short hair. Next week it's flowing like Rapunzel. Uh, I mean, what's up with that? And uh, I remember uh, not long ago, you know, we were doing this sock thing, the guys buying the rainbow socks and the fashionable matching socks. And, you know, now they don't want to wear no socks. I'm like, okay, <laughs> wait a minute, y'all, come on. Uh, and then in some cases, I got a pastor call me not long ago. He had to fire his drummer because his drummer decided he was going to start his own trend by wearing his baseball cap in worship. I said, and you paying him? He said, yeah, man, I had no to just, sir. I like the guy, very good drummer, but you know, he'd been hanging out with some of these guys and he thought he can bring that in here. I said, well, you had no choice. You know, uh, he can't come in and set standards in the church, you know, or, or make them up as he go. So it's a lot going on, you know, and I know we've got to, do our best to influence and win the world. My grandfather from the old school used to say, well, son, I know you, you young and you got my this, that, and other, but you can't clean the fish till you catch them. Right. So, you know, he said, that's why I like the music. I want the choir to sing. If, I, if we get them in the seats, get them here, I preach to them, mm -hmm. you know, and let, let, let's try that formula. And so today, you know, worship, some churches don't don't do hymns. Some churches they don't even know where the hymn books are. Uh, they probably in the back room somewhere. You know, I grew up in a church where they went back of the pew. Mm -hmm. You know, and then later on they would print the words to the morning hymn. Then you know we went through the screen era. They would cast the words on the screen, but it's it's gone in a lot of places. Yeah, and I keep forecasting. The, okay, it's coming back. But what I do recognize, do you see this where you're hearing a lot of these gospel artists now grabbing the words from hymns and they're doing updated arrangement of, of the original hymn? Yes, sir. You, yes. Know, you hear that too? I hear that too. That, that is happening a lot. Um, I, you know, God, the times that we are living in, um, you need some something solid. You need something with strength. You need something that's tried and true. Um, and so the hymns, uh, I, I have a friend who says, you can take a hymn to the hospital when you can't take anything else. If you have a hymn, that message in that hymn will be so strong and so sustaining um, that it will be a blessing. And so I think um, that trend is moving back to what our foundation is, what, what, what Colossians 3 and 16 says, psalms, hymns, and spiritual, spiritual songs. Song. Yeah, um, we, we've, we've got to get back to all of that. And it goes back to what I shared earlier. Um, if, if you throw away your foundation, our foundation from a music ministry perspective, of course, are the hymns. If we, if we negate those, we have nothing for this new stuff to stand on and to rest on. And so eventually it will start to crumble. I think uh, it was Albertina Walker uh, on one of the caravans who said, um, contemporary music can be temporary. Oh yeah. I, 
Yeah, I Ricky can't. Ricky say it all the time too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you've got to um, you've got to be able to couple that contemporary uh -huh, with some foundation stuff. You know, yeah. how great is our God with how great thou art. Yeah, yeah. And that way you reach the generations. Mm -hmm. uh, and both, all of the generations need to hear both. The seniors yeah. need to hear how great is our God, but the young people need to hear how great thou art. Yeah. And there, there needs to be a mutual uh, respecting of, of both. And that can only happen when it's shared in that light. Um, so yeah, I, I do see that trend. Matter of fact, when you said that, uh, I'm my choir is working uh, on some music uh, for an upcoming national convention in September, and the artist is doing an arrangement of "Hold to God's Unchanging Hand." Okay. Yeah. So yeah, they're they're going back to those hymns and you know giving it a new flair, a new twist to it, and that that's great. However, we can get that message across, um, changing the medium. Uh, 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 but not the, the message is good. Mm. Okay, Brandon want to know, how hard was it adding multiple locations for music ministry? Um, <clears throat> well, in order to make that successful, you have to have enough staff um, to uh, cover um, the locations and the services. Uh, um, and I, I'll say this, not only do you need staff, but you need staff that has the heart of the pastor, staff that has the heart of the minister of music, and then overall staff that has ministry as the mantra. So you can't do multiple um, services, multiple locations with people who are just gifted and talented and collecting a check. Oh. <laughs> they have to be ministry minded um, to make that successful. So uh, myself as minister of music, I can't be in all of the places at one time. But if I've trained staff, then I've got to be able to trust them to get the job done yeah. in my stead. Um, so training and trusting um, the staff, but you have to have people who are I think you mentioned that earlier, uh, who are trainable, who want to be mentored, yeah. um, who, who want to follow and recognize that they are part of the team um, and they are part of getting the, that church's experience um, shared to that congregation. Yeah. Oh man, this is awesome. We could, we could go on and on and on. All of these nuggets, man, is, is just priceless. And uh, we appreciate you. All uh, and thank all of you for and your questions and just commenting in this comment section, Teresa. Uh, uh, let me see, she's talking about the medley. Oh, she gave the scripture, first Corinthians 9 22. All right, uh, thank you all, y'all, y'all on it tonight. Bless you. Uh, let me let me ask you to do this. Um, for the for the musicians and mu ministers of music and especially the next generation of those minister of music and musicians, I want you to take a minute and and uh, speak and encourage them or give them some words of advice. Some of these guys don't have mentors, you know, uh, or they're not availing themselves. And you mentioned something that was so key that, that I, I wish we had a whole nother hour just talk about when you talked about exposure to the older generation as well as the younger generation when you mentioned how great is our God and how great thou art. The, the exposure to bridge that gap because if we can expose people to what we're talking about, they might get it. And same way, the older generation might go along with some of this if, if they're exposed to it more. So that, that's such another perfect example. I'm gonna owe you all my must tides cause I'm sure gonna repeat it, you know. So they send me an offer, I'm gonna send you your cut. All right. <laughs> oh man, this is some good stuff. But, but take a moment if you will, uh, uh, doctor, and uh, just speak your heart uh, from your experience 
to this generation of musicians and directors? Okay. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that I think is so important um, for musicians, choir directors, ministers of music, um, you have to look at your house where God has planted you to serve and make a conscious effort to feed the whole house. We'll let that sink in. You've got to make a conscious effort to feed the whole house. And how do you get to that point? Um, you, you have to begin to establish relationship, not, not only with the pastor, but establish relationship with um, your music ministry, with the members in, their, in the church. Kind of hear their stories, where, where they're coming from, where they've been, what they're experiencing now, and let that um, color and temper your music choices. Um, so don't be closed or don't, don't just think about only what you like or what's hot or, or what's the, the up and coming thing that you're hearing, uh, but feed the whole house. One of the things that I'll be real transparent here and then I'll move on. Um, my church, um, we have three services. Before pandemic, we had four. We have three services. Our first service, uh, our seven o'clock service is mainly our seasoned crowd, our seasoned saints, seven o'clock. I'm not a morning person. I'm a, I can hang with you midnight, 2 a.m. in the morning. I'm good. Um, and so initially, I was approaching that 7 a.m. service as, okay, let's just, you know, let's just get through this service so we can get on to the nine o'clock and the 11 o'clock. And then my pastor shared something with me. He said, our seven o'clock service is out giving our nine o'clock and our 11 o'clock service combined. Now these are seniors, these are retirees. These are people who have pretty much lived. I mean, they're own, they own their homes and all of that. And so when he said that to me, I, I had to take a different approach. I'm like, these are the people that are carrying this church. And so I've got to make sure that I have something to feed them as well as feed the nine o'clock and feed the 11 o'clock. So feeding all of the generations. So if I come to your house and all you serve me is peas, every time I come, I just get peas. Pretty, pretty soon I'm probably going to stop coming. But if you vary it and you give me some meat and you give me some bread and you give me a starch and you give me uh, a dessert, that keeps me coming. Um, and so that would be the first thing I would say, look to feed the whole house. Now you're not gonna be able to do everything every Sunday, but at some point they should get something that would uh, uh, feed them and, and be uh, tasteful for them. The second thing I would say, and here's a big one, Kill the Lucifer spirit daily. Kill the Lucifer spirit daily. Um, Lucifer, as, as we know, he was the minister of music in heaven. And so he wanted all that attention and, and so forth. And listen to me and hear me. We got to make sure as musicians, we are not uh, focusing or making sure that the attention is on us. We are just the conduit for the people to hear um, Christ. Jesus is the light. We just happen to be a sign uh, to magnify him before the people. So you've been chosen to be a representative of the light. You are not the light. You are a representative of the light. So you got to kill that Lucifer spirit daily. You got to remain humble. You got to remain underneath your pastor. You got to give God glory for the gift that he's put inside of you and, and the opportunity to share it with others. Keep Jesus um, as at the center of everything you do. Focus on ministry. My pastor taught me this. If you focus on ministry, money will come. You don't have to chase it. It's, it's going to come to you. I, we talked about uh, the, the TV show uh, that picked up one of my songs. I had no idea. That was money chasing me. I was doing my, my, my ministry. I was doing my work. And so if you focus on ministry, money will come. Here's another nugget. Bloom where you're planted. 
Don't uproot and got to replant. Bloom where you're planted. Make some things happen uh, at your church. Make some things happen in your community. You don't have to uproot and constantly start over. Um, and then make sure you always have a covering. Serve your local church first. Then go abroad. I think um, ministry outside of the church is blessed when there's a connection to the church. So if you are part of a, com a community choir, uh, make sure you go to your church rehearsal before you go to your community choir rehearsal. Because if you go to your church rehearsal first, God is going to bless that community choir beyond measure. Uh, th there's order in the house of God. And when we get it out of order, now God can't bless it because we're out of order. So you got to make sure um, that you serve your home first before um, you go abroad. Um, and so uh, the, the, the last thing I want to say, give God the glory for all things, for everything, every opportunity that comes your way. People will say, oh, you've done a fantastic job to God be the glory because it's not you. You're just the conduit. You're just the vehicle that God has chosen to utilize to get his message across. And I'll stop there. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, I, maybe I owe you some tithes anyway. I'm feeling Because <laughs> <laughs> not only have you counseled, but you preached. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> and you laid it out, man. Oh, God, I appreciate these words. And uh, our son is in the comment section. He said, oh, yeah, he, he's rooting. Thank you, Roosevelt, for being in there. And uh, Teresa and all you all. I mean, uh, they're listening, man. To God be the glory. Sir. Katrina Green. Is that one of your members? That's one of my members. All right. Yeah. Well, she, she, she's, she's in there saying, preach such valuable info. Thank you, doctor. Uh, we we got to do this again. Uh, I, I've been trying. I'm going to probably get you and Jeffrey in the Valley and some of the other guys and uh, to do like a panel or something. Oh, I love that. Uh, offer some great uh, counsel and information that I think is so much needed in this day, in this time, you know, for up and coming church musicians, you know, because I'm telling people, I, God has blessed me. I don't need to take none of this to the grave. I mean, I want to just empty myself mm -hmm. and, and get everything. I tell everybody around me, get it while you can. That's right. Get every day, call me, ask me, whatever you want to know. Get it while I'm here, because there ain't any of y'all falling out and screaming when I'm gone. That's that's it. I'm here, I'm, I'm, I'm availing myself. And of course, with social media and and, and this medium of, of Zoom and all this other, you know, we can be at home and talk just like this and still share uh, yes. so much wisdom and knowledge. And it's such a blessing. Thank you, Marla. Uh, Larkin, one of Detroit's greatest soloists, works with the uh, uh, National Gospel Choirs and Courses as well. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. That's coming up. Yeah, yeah, man. We know it's going to be awesome. So listen, man, I appreciate you taking the time again uh, for sharing. And listen, friends, if you missed any part of this, it'll upload again. You'll be able to go back and uh, listen to it and watch it. And then, of course, again, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Fellowship of Music and Arts. Uh, we'll upload it there. So, and become a part of the fellowship. You know, join this noisy crew. I mean, we just love praising God. And and if you all got anything going on, uh, send it to our page. We'll do our best to advertise it and get it out, and uh, let the world know what's going on. Again. Uh, Dr. Clark Joseph, my friends, uh, was our guest tonight, and we appreciate him. If you don't mind, I, I want to pray before we go. Yes. That's all right, Doctor. Father, we thank you for this awesome privilege and fellowship tonight. We thank you for the ministry gift of Dr. Clark Joseph, God, and what you put in him for us. We thank you that you using him even now, God how you've blessed him and anointed him 
with such a gift that's needed by the world. We thank you for his past victories and all of his past accomplishments. But we believe you, God, that the greater is before him. We believe that the latter shall be greater than the former. We believe that the best is yet to come. Now, God, as you order his steps continually, as he's proven himself a servant, stabilized in a church, God, working hand in hand with the vision of the pastor, God, and leading people to you through music, God, we pray that you will continue to bless whatever his hands touch, cause it to prosper. We pray Psalms 90 and 17 over his life and let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon him, establish the work upon him, yea, the work of his hands, establish thou it. So whatever his hands touch, we thank you that you're gonna cause it to prosper. God, if there's a need in his life, even now, we thank you for supplying it mentally, spiritually, emotionally, financially, spirit, whatever it is, God, we thank you in advance for doing what you do, make a way where there is no way. We thank you, God, that now you're going to go before him and make easy and successful his way continually. And we pray, God, that his music ministry shall be spoken of throughout the world, through abroad, everywhere, that men, women, boys, and girls will come to know the name Jesus Christ because of the music standard and excellence that he espouses to, to teach and to reach. Thank you right now, God, for him being able to share with us wisdom and being able to give us instruction. And we pray, God, that you will cover him in Jesus' name. This is your servant's prayer. Amen and thank God. Well, my brother, I can't thank you enough for being here and thank all of you for being here and sharing with us tonight. And listen, again, uh, watch this in its entirety. If you were on tonight, go back and listen to it again because you won't go wrong. Until next week, any closing remarks before we go, doctor? Yes, uh, Bishop Andre Woods, I just wanna thank you uh, for reaching out. I, I have followed your ministry uh, from GMWA back in the day. I mean, I followed your ministry from way back and to um, get an, uh, a message from you about this. I, I was like, me? Wow. Uh, to God, to God be the glory. Um, I, I saw you from afar off, you know, at the organ uh, with Bishop, uh, with uh, Pastor Nix, Charles Nix. I was, you know, yeah. just new to GMWA. And now to have this relationship Nobody but God yeah, can yeah. do this. And I just thank him and uh, praising God for uh, how you have uh, chosen to utilize this medium of Facebook yeah. to get the message of Jesus Christ out and to be a blessing uh, to music uh, ministers and musicians and choir directors alike. Yeah. So kudos to you. Thank you, man. I, I appreciate that encouragement because my whole aim is uh, we may not win Stellas or Grammys or more, or, you know, that, that's good. And we thank God for that's the music industry. We appreciate God. And, and we're doing this thing in Detroit. You'll hear about it later. We did something on public TV just a, a week or so ago. Uh, I just believe there's so many grassroots people that didn't have social media and there were no stellar awards that you know that none of this stuff was even created that we know of now and uh but they were the pillars yes they they started these traditions and i tell people all the time when they approach me and say charles nix and macio woods and all certain people they know i've been around donald vales tommy whitfield all these folk from detroit dr dorgan needham mm -hmm. all of them i said i stand on their shoulders if it if it if it was no them, it wouldn't be no me. There you go. Because I just pray that I I I do well uh, living up to the standard to continue the legacy of music and excellence. That's that's all my prayers been. So I appreciate you. Pray for us, man. Here in Detroit, we're trying to hold up the light and do what we do. All right. Uh, to do our part, but you will be hearing from me real soon on some things. All right. uh, 
that we're going to be doing. And I think you uh, would love being a part of. Blessings okay. to you all now. Hey, Y'all know we'll talk a whole nother hour. <laughs> talk to you soon, my friend. All right, take care.